Good morning, my name is Maria Antonia Rojas and she is Antonia Oliveira. We are sophomores at Colegio Bolivar in Cali, Colombia, and we are here to present our program called Yes, You Can, Strengthening Character in Order to Prevent Consumption of Psychoactive Substances in Teenagers. We are all constantly exposed to drugs and alcohol. We know that these substances are extremely harmful for us, but we still consume them, despite what many would believe. And this not only happens in Colombia, or even in Latin America, but in the whole world. So this is why we decided to center our project in designing a prevention program. So we first started by gathering some statistics and general data in order to get a brief background information of the magnitude of the situation. So worldwide statistics. On average, every person 15 or older drinks 6.2 liters of pure alcohol per year. Consumers drink on average 17 liters of pure alcohol annually. Harmful use of alcohol results in 3.3 million deaths each year. From 148 countries that have reported the existence of a population that injects drugs into their system, 120 also reported HIV infection among this same population. And at least 15.6 million people have drug use disorders. So after analyzing all these worldwide statistics, we started realizing that the problem was closer to us than we really thought. So tobacco consumption has decreased by 4% in the past few years. In 2018, the rate was 17.3%, and in 2013, it went down to 12.9%. 42.1% of the population has smoked at least once in their lifetime, and 12.9% of the interviews are current smokers. This is a little bit more than 3 million smokers in Colombia. The average age people smoke for the first time is 17 years, and 25% of the smokers started when they were 14 years old. There is also this big difference between genders. So 18.84% um, of males smoke tobacco, while only 7.4% of females smoke this substance. There has been an increase of 4% on the alcohol consumption, where 35.8% of the population consumes this substance. Of these, 19.32% of underage teenagers are consumers. This age range is between 12 to 17 years old, which is illegal here in Colombia. Um, the age range with the most consumers is 18 to 24 years, with consumers being 49.2% which is extremely high. There is also this big difference, once again, in gender, where 46.2% of males consume alcohol, while only 25.9% of females consume this substance. And the average age people drink for their first time in males is 16 years old, while in females it's 18 years old. Marijuana is the first illicit substance most consumed in Colombia. The rate is three times higher in men than in women. 62% of the consumers are between 12 to 24 years old, and 50% of the population considers it is easy to get this drug. More than 57.6% of the consumers from the past year show signs of, of dependency as this substance is extremely addictive. Also, 2.2% consumed this drug at least once in the past month. Cocaine is the second illicit substance most consumed in Colombia, with 3.2% of the population having consumed it at least once in their lifetime. There has been an increase from 2.5% to 3.2%. The average age uh, with the most consumers is 18 to 24 years, and 60% of consumers from the past year show signs of dependency as this substance is also extremely addictive. The average age people consume for the first time is 19.7 years and there is also this difference between gender where 5.5% of males consume this substance while only 1.1% of females consume cocaine. So when we started to research this topic more in depth, we realized it was vital to talk about narco-trafficking since it affected and affects our community greatly to such an extent that there is a subculture called narco-culture, which influences our way of acting and behaving, vocabulary, moral values, likes and dislikes, and even our appearance. So narco-culture and drugs. This made drugs common. It made them look as something normal as part of our lives. Today, every social class consumes them, 
at parties, trips, or even in schools. Additionally, they made it easy to access. So past programs. So after analyzing all those statistics, we started looking at the types of interventions that were made at our school. So the programs from outside, uh, they were very repetitive. They had this authority figure where the students felt as if they were being scolded. They were also often childish and out of context. The psychology department made also some interventions which turned out to be extra work for the students. They were also very repetitive and some people considered them to be boring. The government programs like the police or Bienestar Familiar were also extra work, had this authority figure, were mostly out of context and could also be considered boring. And there was this religious approach that was done with the people who wanted it, but it was also extra work, had this authority figure, was childish and mostly out of context as well. However, these programs not only had bad qualities, but also had very good qualities. So, for example, the outside programs, they used this fear of the consequences, where students were thought about the consequences of consuming these substances and all the negative effects that occurred. Um, they also focused on authenticity and character and were very dynamic, so everyone enjoyed them. The interventions made with the psychology department used scientific facts and were applicable to Colegio Bolívar since they were meant specifically for Bolívar. Uh, the government programs used this fear of the consequences as well and showed scientific facts, which everyone likes. And the religious approach also used the fear of the consequences, focused on authenticity and character, and was dynamic as well. Phases. Investigation and planning. As I said before, we started by looking at some statistics, both worldwide and from Colombia. Then we analyzed how this situation was managed in our school. So we had two focus groups, one with the directives and one with the psychology department where we would share our ideas, questions, concerns, and opinions. Then we looked at other programs in order to get ideas for activities we could include in our program. So from this investigation and planning, we, come up, we came up with two important conclusions. One, that we were going to work with a population at risk, the seventh graders, and that our program would be indirect. So once the investigation and planning phase was completed, we started executing the project. First, we needed to ask permission to the directive, to the health class professor and the psychology department since they were going to give us the times and the spaces to interact with the 7th graders. And after these permissions were granted, we started planning the activities like the teacher's workshop, the presentation for the health class, we started choosing the movie, um, designing the balloon activity and planning the chat. Our first problem was the rejection of one of our activities. When we showed the middle school principal our list of activities, he approved all of them except Big Brother, Big Sister. This activity was inspired in a program that takes place in the United States and Canada and has proven to be successful. The idea was to start with a pilot group. Each GIM student would have a little brother or a little sister from 7th grade, and the goal was to build a friendship bond between us so that they would share their problems and concern with us so we would be able to guide them. We were planning to later on expand this program so that each 7th grader would have a big brother or big sister in 10th grade. So this idea was rejected principally because it was very complex and took a long time to prepare, and we didn't have this required time. Another problem we encountered was our indirect philosophy that crashed with the health class curriculum. So, because we needed to help the teacher meet the curriculum, and because of time issues, we needed to make an explicit presentation which showed the bad consequences of consuming these drugs, uh, which made our program turn a little bit more direct than we initially expected it. So, Yes You Can was intended to be a new approach which combined the good qualities of the other programs and excluded the bad qualities, and it basically had two characteristics. First, it was an indirect program, and second, it was an approach from the students instead of the directive, like the school principal, the counselors, or the teachers.
Our goal was to establish a program which helps strengthen the character of young teens by designing activities that indirectly prevent the use and consumption of psychoactive substances. And we also aimed to strengthen self-esteem, confidence, and authenticity. So what we believe is the best part about our project is what, that it was designed entirely by students with a four-year difference between us, that we are 16, and the seventh graders, which are 12 years old. So this allows uh, the chance for a friendship bond to be created, which we believe is better than the authoritative approach previously used in other programs, which has proven to be ineffective. So activities. Our first activity was a PowerPoint presentation that took 30 to 50 minutes during the health class. We talked about drugs and alcohol through five different perspectives, each with an explanation to why we thought it was important to include them. So first came the historical context, because to understand the current situation in Colombia, we need to understand its history. Then came statistics, because these are issues that include us. We are affected by them. Next came the legal context because it is important to know how the laws affect us, our friends, and family. We also included the scientific context, because it is vital to know how the psychoactive substances affect our body. And lastly, the psychological context, because it is also of great importance to understand how these substances affect our mind and behavior. While creating the PowerPoint, we worked with the health teacher, because he helped us filter the information. In other words, include what's really important. And he also gave us tips on how to interact with the students. We tried to make this PowerPoint as dynamic as possible because we know that a presentation this long can be very boring. So we were constantly asking questions, both from what we had just presented or more reflexive questions. I think that this strategy was successful because in my group, the students were constantly participating and were engaged in the presentation. Then I planned another two activities that took place again during their health class. First, they saw a movie called Mateo. This was a different and interesting approach. And through this movie, they were expected to make reflections and connections with their life and social pressure. Also, the overall message is directly related to the to what we're trying to transmit through a program, which is one needs to be authentic and follow one's dreams. You choose your future. ¿Y usted qué? ¿Por qué no llego esta mañana? Hmm. Digo, lo que pasa es que me metí en un berraco problema en eso de madre colegio. Ahora me toca ir a dar un ensayo del grupo de teatro. Y si no voy me echan. ¿Cómo se llama? Then we had a chat. Here we shared some of our anecdotes and reflect upon the movie. We tried to create an environment where the students would feel comfortable and willing to open up to us and share some of their experiences and questions. So we divided the anecdotes in four groups. 
each with a specific category and a conclusion. So first uh, was, are adults always right? And the conclusion was, you have the power and option to say no. Then, if my friends do it, do I have to? And what we were trying to transmit was that your true friends don't care if you drink or not. Then came, if my family is celebrating, why can't I? The message we were trying to transmit was that live life step by step. Don't get ahead of yourself. Lastly came my criteria, my decision. And what you were saying was that being authentic and being able to make your own decisions makes you stronger. Smoking and drinking doesn't. Activity. So the activity you just did was actually one of the activities that we did with the seventh graders. It was this authenticity workshop and where we started focusing on confidence, self-esteem, and authenticity. The purpose was to identify the unconscious behaviors that determine the actions of human beings and social groups. And after doing all these activity, we discussed about the importance of individuality and how this is a key factor to understanding that it is important to avoid the pressures of the teenage years. So it is not necessary for people to copy what others do since you need to accept yourself by who you are and once you accept yourself then people will start accepting you as well. We also discussed about controlling impulsivity and we tried to identify the emotions and control these impulsive reactions and the final conclusion was to protect our dreams. It is not necessary to ruin those of others. So we started asking them questions like why they started destroying the dreams of others and they, when they realized that they had no real answer, uh, they finally understood about uh, individuality, authenticity and how they need to be confident in themselves. So our fourth intervention was a workshop with the parents. Um, this approach from the students instead of the directives like the school counselor, the principal or the teachers was intended to raise their awareness and tell them like we are concerned about this issue and you should be too. So please take a moment to analyze what you can do in order to help us address this issue. So uh, we first started by telling them some of our anecdotes uh, to show them that it is actually happening. We are worried and they should be worried as well. Then we talked about the indirect pressures, like the parents that are very absent because they either have to work and they don't have time to spend with their kids and how this may lead to the students finding other role models that are not part of their family, like them, their nannies or their drivers. We then discussed limits and protections, how there are two extremes where people do not set limits for their kids uh, and the kids feel lost with no guidance or when they are overprotected so they feel powerless and they feel the need to rebel against this authority figure. Uh, so um, when you say one, they'll say two. Uh, when you say black, they'll say blue. Only as a sign of rebellion, even though they might agree with what you say, they just do it to go against and show that they actually have the power. And lastly, we talked about those parents that want to be their kids' bodies. So they lose all of the authority they have uh, and for example, if their kid says, oh no, uh, I want to have alcohol in my party because if not, I won't have any friends, then the parent will be like, oh, okay, that's okay, uh, we can have alcohol. And we made some recommendations on how they could avoid all of these things from happening. So this slide shows, is a reference to the movie Mean Girls, and it is showing um, in the first picture the mom saying, I'm not a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. On the second picture, she's saying, um, she's asking them if they want a little bit of alcohol because she says, if you're going to do it, I'll rather you do it in the house. And then she comes into the room saying, hey, you guys, happy hour is from four to six. So she's incentivating the kids to start consuming this substance. Future activities. One of the future activities is called Bolivar Alumni. We plan 
to contact prominent alumni so that they would share with us moments they have been under pressure and how they reacted. Additionally, we will post uh, motivational posters around the hall, this aiming to help build stronger character. So another activity we're planning for the future is a workshop with the teachers and the directives. Uh, once again, the idea of the students addressing them instead of an authority figure like their bosses or their parents that sometimes call the school worried about alcohol or other drug use. Uh, so first, we plan on telling them what we have done so far. So we plan on telling them about the health presentation, the chat, the um, parents' workshop, the movie that we saw, or the activity of the balloons. We then want to tell them about the plans for the future and ask if they have any suggestions. Then we want to discuss the results, what we believe, ha the impact that we believe our project has had, And we want to ask them if they have noticed any changes in their behavior or differences in their character of how they react to certain things and if they believe that this project has been successful so far. And at the end, we plan on giving them tips on how to start addressing the st like strengthening character, self-esteem, and how to address peer pressures. We are also planning on creating a YouTube channel where we will start playing short films that are supposed to transmit this indirect message of self-esteem, fighting social pressure and authenticity. We plan to carry out this project with the help from the cinema club uh, since the directive is a kid in our grade level and he is willing to help us create these indirect movies. We have created an Instagram account where our goal is to promote self-esteem, authenticity, and fighting social pressure. Also, we will post updates on projects and how you can help us. So, to sum up, we designed a project to prevent drug and alcohol consumption, strengthen self-esteem, authenticity, and confidence so we can help build strong individuals.